Okay, about time for an update here. And a few points. One, I got my first patron on Patreon. Thank you very much. I, will, I won't say the name unless you tell me I, I, I can tell you. But otherwise, it's a start. Someone's got to be first, and someone decided to be first. So great. And just, again, let me know what you want from the Cafe Press shop. At your level, about, you know, within about $10. And I'll try and get to you as soon as I can. And a uh, few things probably need to talk back a little bit here from the from the previous one and again i should have known i know better about imdb especially when things are in production it's it's very good at things that are already locked and out and done but in production it can be a little weird so yeah no bad rope let's make this clear it doesn't really change I'm trying to level this a bit all right we'll do it that way the overall situation really really didn't change much with discovery because it is still having to operate under that JJ type license. Because CBS is not the only production involved, and they are very jealous about maintaining their total control over the property. So they're not going to let anybody, you know, just go in and do. You know, so long as they got other production companies involved, they're to, they're going to use that other license. The only way they're going to do, you know, do anything that is pure prime and come you know, out would be if CBS does it all on their own. And probably for financial reasons, I think you're not going to do that. But, no. Um, and apparently Paramount Television is not involved, so someone stuck that in there. I guess probably thought, well, of course Paramount is well, No, not necessarily. Just because of Star Trek doesn't mean Paramount is now out of the picture, apparently. But you got, you got CBS involved, and then you got Alex Kurtzman's company, and Brian Fuller's company still involved, and I think there's maybe one other. But yeah, it's still clearly operating under that alternative license, though. So the overall picture really didn't change. Just some of the names are being banged about, and I think because Alex Kurtzman's involved, probably too, because of his association with Bad Robot, that's why it's like, no, you're still on the same license. But there's also, you know, people you know don't quite get the idea that you know Star Trek Beyond bombed. You know, they made so much money. All right, Star Trek Beyond's budget was about 186 million dollars. It only brought in, and now the way the math works out, and it's not a hard and fast thing, but it's it's, it's a, the general rule because between you, you got to figure in another big chunk for promotions because that's not that's not free. You got to you got to pay for promotion budget, and also don't forget the theaters have to get a chunk of the action too. They're not doing this as a charity. They want expect to get paid, so they get. It works out usually about half the half the take. So you figure it all out, and a, a motion picture these days has to make at least double its production budget back. And then these days, usually a little more than double. I mean, that, that double that form was is ancient, and I think now it's probably outdated too. Because they start throwing mega bucks at these movies, you know, hundred, hundred eighty, hundred, two hundred million dollar budgets. Like Valerian, God knows how that thing's ever going to turn a profit. Because I don't think there's enough DVDs and purchases in the world to turn that one around. It, it might do very well overseas where they actually are, are familiar with the, with the uh, property. But in here, it's like, eh. But yeah, it's... Again, they had like a $184 million budget. So, realistically, for Beyond to even turn dollar one in profit, it had to... It would have had to have made about four hundred million dollars total, with everything figured in. It made about a hundred and fifty some million, and I, I put all this in the comments in the last video, but I figured bringing it in here, about a hundred and fifty some million domestically. And that, you know, again, and for a Star Trek movie, American science fiction property, to not pull it off at home that's bad I mean yeah it's 150 million but it's, again this these day and age 150 million and molten, it's not that hard to get with the jacked up ticket prices and it made like a hundred and about another 180 overseas you add it all up it's about 380 some million total which still puts it about 50 some million short of even breaking even Now, think of what you want. These studio executives are not in the business to break even. They expect to make megabucks, especially when you got Marvel down the road. 
with movies that are bringing in literally a billion dollars. And they're doing most of that domestically. They are not, you know, Paramount has got problems already. They, you know, so they are not in the business of just breaking even, especially when the, in the last, you know, Transformers movie. I mean, that one took a major dive, too. I you know, think you know, mean barely opened. So you got that nonsense here, you know. And that's why you're not going to see another J.J. Trek movie probably ever. I think that that line is now dead. And I also, you know, and on a side note, because J.J. was so damn tight-fisted with the marketing of that thing, they had four tie-in novels ready to go. Paid for and um, probably already coming from the printers, and he put the kibosh on them. God knows why. Because you had, you know, veteran you know, authors who had written, got, you know, some very good Star Trek novels. They had written these books, and they got paid for them. And for all we know, they're sitting in the warehouse somewhere, or they got burned, one of the two. But they were ready to go, and J.J. pulled the plug on them. And I don't know, the man has no sense of marketing whatsoever. I mean, he also tried to tell CBS to you know stop making original any you know merchandise from any of the other series. He wanted his to be the only one to block. Of course, CBS told him to go screw himself. It's like no, <laughs> we're not shutting down a billion dollar a year industry because of your ego. You want to you know, you'll have your marketing chances, but you you know you're not shutting down the other ones. And he's had his marketing chances, and they've all died rather badly too. Uh, you know. The action figures have almost pretty much started on the clearance rack already. The to and the toys. I think the phaser is the only one that really is hard to get by. Communicating tricorders, you can find them anywhere for dirt cheap. Even even the uh, Enterprise toy, it's not that hard to get it for like twenty some dollars. And one of the reasons, because I've I've got two of those uh, Hot Wheels JJ prizes. I got them off the peg, you know, for 87 cents each, with like all the other Hot Wheels cars are these days. And I haven't opened them up mainly because I don't trust myself with them, frankly. I'd probably do something rude to them when I get them out of the package. Or Leave them in there. You know, maybe some twerp will pay like 80 bucks for them one day. But, actually, I mainly want to talk back some of the stuff about, you know, Bad Robot and Paramount. Okay, so Bad Robot and Paramount are not officially involved. But the, the overall deal still remains. It's like it's, it's under that alternative license. And it's like... They can say it's prime all, the, all year long, but it's like... It's not lining up. There's no way in hell it's going to line up. And it's clear. You know, so there's no way they can claim with a straight face that it's prime. It's going to be an alternative little thing. It's going to flutter and die. And the depending on how they finance, if... Uh, unless... Netflix has paid for the whole thing up front, which is it's doubtful. Accountants don't like doing that sort of thing, and they've got cash flow problems of their own, so they're really ticked off of this. If they've only paid like for half of it right now, and this thing doesn't take off in spectacular fashion, they just you know say we're not paying for the rest of it. Guess what? Discovery ends at episode six or or seven, so about halfway. And that's it, and then you're going to see Nick Myers. So I, I don't know how the hell can you make Khan interesting for more than a few episodes, frankly. It's like, okay, we're on the jungle planet. Let's start, you know, you know eugenics version of Swiss Family Robinson. Oh, wait, next door neighbor blew up. Oh, now it's a desert. Yeah, there's your story. Yeah. Last frame would be, you know, check off and Tyrell materializing in the, in the dirt in the middle of a sandstorm. But that's where we stand right now, guys. Again, thank you to my new patron. Thanks to all the new subscribers, too. I'm mean, ranking them up. And I really like the fact that that other video is like, looks like it's starting to go viral here because I mean, the views are going wacky. I like that because I'm really trying to get a career going here. And now, as good a time as any, to really start getting something going because. We're going to the bank tomorrow to see about getting some money. <laughs> Hopefully improving our lives somewhat here. So.
get back at you later then. Uh, Cafe Press, PayPal, Patreon down below. Give early, give often, and the more the mirror here. Someone's already stepped forward, so who wants to be next, okay? Catch you later.